muchachos y muchachas, it almost seems as if the same subjects that we talked about in the early thousands somehow are start be, starting to creep in in 2021. Uh, first, you know, the Afghanistan, Taliban, you know, these are things that we haven't really heard from since the 90s or early 2000s. And then get lo and behold, we have a whole situation going on in Afghanistan. And then now there's some documentation or news on 9-11 that's starting to resurface. Yeah, stay right there. We're going to go through it. New studies are providing a fascinating insight into how we view anti-aging serums. The latest research shows most people over the age of 35 have faith that their anti-wrinkle cream works and that over 60% of women and over 45 use anti-wrinkle cream regularly. Anti-aging cream cells are growing, but the question remains, which one is the most effective? The issue with anti-aging creams typically found in store shelves is that they are low quality ingredients and that they do more harm than good. This is why I love Glow with Natalie. Users report experiencing a more youthful appearance, faded wrinkles, diminishing age spots, and softer, clearer, smoother looking skin within a matter of days of using the product. It's the best anti-aging solution on the market, and I personally vouch for it because I use it myself. I highly recommend Glow with Natalie. Try it today for 38% off by going to glowwithnatalie.com or by visiting the link below. Okay, so I believe it was on Friday, Joe Biden ordered a declassification review of 9-11 probe documents. Now, if you're anyone like me, I personally do not think that I would particularly blindly put all my eggs in one basket on this subject. Well, because you guys can probably understand why. You know, 9-11 is a very controversial subject, and uh, given the censorious nature of our big tech platforms and, you know, the mainstream media, um, of course, there's always a narrative that is always driven. So I'm not quite sure, and they're, they're connected to the big, powerful, you know, whatever. I'm not quite sure that I would necessarily trust the these de declassified documents, but that's just me. So he ordered a declassification review of the secret documents related to the FBI's 9-11 investigation while the White House announced Friday. Now, to me, this is just saying, hey, you know, uh, this is like the the wolves, a pack of wolves showing the sheep. You know, this is this is the investigation. This is the investigation we did, and again, not necessarily that it's one hundred percent trans as transparent as we would want it to be. But that's just me again. That's just my opinion. He signed an executive order directing the Department of Justice and other agencies to oversee the review and ordering Attorney General Merrick Garland to release any declassified documents publicly over the next six months. Now, the biggest question is why? Why is this coming up right now? Now, I know that there have been families that have been pressuring uh, the agency or I'm sorry, the uh, establishment to release these documents. That group of 9-11 uh, families united praise their review. This is what they say. They're thrilled to see the president forcing the release of more evidence about the Saudi connections to the 9-11 attacks. Terry Strada, whose husband died in the attack, said that in a statement for the group, we have been fighting the FBI and intelligence community for too long, but this looks like a true turning point. Uh, I don't I don't quite know that I'm going to call it a turning point again, because they could just be... Um, what is that? What is that called? It's called Line with Statistics. And I believe this is actually a book where they kind of go through this tactic or this this controversy of how one could possibly tell the truth by leaving the truth out. That's just how I view it. That's what I think. So the practical impact of the executive order in any new documents might yield uh, was not immediately clear. Past investigations have outlined ties between Saudi nationals and some of the airplane hijackers, but not have been established by the government was directly involved. Well, that's funny because I actually have another story from none other than CBS that suggests that the uh, the hijackers actually had concrete U.S.-based support. So we'll go through that. A long-running lawsuit in federal court in New York alleges that the Saudi officials provided significant support to some of the hijackers before the attacks and aims to hold the kingdom accountable. The Saudi government has denied any connection to the attacks. The Saudi government has denied any connection to the attacks. As a candidate in 2020, Biden told some of the group that he would direct the Justice Department to err on the side of disclosure, the statement claimed. 
So anyway, uh, of course, the rest of the article goes through some curiosities about 9-11. And, you know, uh, of course, what I will say and suggest is that there are particular professionals out there that have done this for decades that might suggest that something is funny. And so uh, with that being said, I'm not quite sure what type of narrative they're trying to drive. And again, the question is why. What could be coming out? in the near future that could combat with this narrative, because I'm pretty sure this is loading up the fact checkers up with some ammunition. I'm just saying it might happen. It might happen. I'm not sure why. So back to what I was talking about. Oh, this has no relevance. This video, they always have videos that, oh, there it goes. Okay. Former FBI agent who worked on a still secret FBI 9-11 case says hijackers and U.S. based, had a U.S. based support network. So as you guys saw in New York Times, I'm sorry, not in New York Times, New York Post, they stated that um, something over, along the lines that the hijackers, uh, what was it, that the hijackers, a long running lawsuit in federal court in New York alleges that the Saudi officials provided significant support to some of the hijackers. So they're saying that uh, according to a lawsuit, it alleges that Saudi officials had significant support to some of the hijackers. Well, some of these hijackers apparently have U.S.-based support. So uh, this kind of goes into uh, some of the investigation that they're or the probe that Biden is supposed to release or what have what have you. So actually. A longtime FBI agent, uh, while it could take months for the documents to be released, Danny Gonzalez, a former FBI agent who worked on the operation, told CBS News that he's confident two of the hijackers had U.S.-based support network. 19 hijackers cannot commit 3,000 mass murders by themselves, Gonzalez said in his first television interview about the investigation. Again, this guy, is he's been working on this case. And... I just have to, you know, I have to give it up to CBS. I mean, this seems a little bit true. I I would think that they would have some sort of connections in the U.S. Based on what you found, do you believe that there was a domestic support network for the hijackers? That's what a CBS News senior investigative correspondent, Catherine Hetheridge, which, by the way, love Catherine Hetheridge. I think she does incredible um, non-biased work. I, I love her. Ask Gonzalez. Obviously, he said, I can't comment on it, but you don't have to be an FBI agent within the 2016 years of experience to figure that out ah okay so what they would call us conspiracy theorists when it comes to 9-11 and uh uh, uh, other certain buildings that came down that day i'm just saying you know uh, sounds kind of like he kind of leans or could agree with some of the normies out there that make their assessments about 9-11? I'm just saying. Gonzalez said two hijackers, Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Midhar, were helped by a number of Saudis, including Omar al-Buyami. Okay, so we'll give it that. Apparently, there was some Saudi help, according to, to this FBI former FBI agent. Bayumi, who was working with the Saudi government, said he randomly ran into two hijackers at a restaurant in Los Angeles and urged them to move to San Diego. There, they helped them find an apartment and open a bank account. Interesting. The two hijackers even went to flight school nearby. Gonzalez said that he is under FBI orders not to reveal certain classified information about Operation Encore. As is another former agent, Ken Williams, who wrote a memo, memo excuse me, before 9-11 that warned potential terrorists were taking flight lessons in Arizona. The evidence is there. We've seen it. I've seen it. But can't get into specifics because of the protective order, William said. Both former agents are now working for the families as investigators. I can't sit on the sidelines when I know the truth, Gonzalez said. The 9-11 families are suing Saudi Arabia for money. The Saudis deny official involvement and the 9-11 commission report found no connection. The commission report also found that Bayoumi was an unlikely candidate for clandestine involvement with the Islamist extremists. And he said that there's no credible evidence that he believed in violent extremism or knowingly a extremist groups. CBS reached out to the Saudi embassy in Washington with questions and asked to hear directly from Bayoumi. Among other Saudi nationals, an embassy spokesman had no comment. Gonzalez said that the public would learn of a lot of records from Operation Encore, which began two years after the commission's report were released and that could change the public's understanding of 9-11. Look, this is what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say this. I'm not... 100% counting on these documents being 100% transparent. But what I will say is that it could offer more 
room for conflict. So if there is something maybe uh, along the lines of the truth, you know, maybe that could be a connection already made by people who are already assessing 9-11 in the background. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the theorists, the conspiracy illusionists of our day. So um, there's always something to offer in documentation where, when it's you know, uh, declassified. I just don't trust the entirety um, if it's going to give us a direct narrative. Brett Eagleson is leading a group of 9-11 families fighting for the documents to be released. He was 15 years old when his father, Bruce, was killed in the World Trade Center South Tower. 20 years later, he said he wants his daughter to know the secrets of 9-11 and who killed their grandfather. Your grandfather was a hero, he told her. Eagleson called Biden's executive order a critical first step, but said that he remained skeptical. Bravo, as do I. In response to the president's decision to disclassify some of the documents, the FBI said in a statement that it will continue to work in coordination with the Department of Justice and other agencies to declassify and release the documents related to the 9-11 investigation. Um, again, I just found this information very interesting that it would come out today. Why today? What's going to be released later, you know, possibly that might come back with whatever they're going to release. I just feel in my gut that there's going to be a narrative that they want to shove down our throats. And the, again, this is just loading up the mainstream narrative, the fact checkers of our day with ammunition. Uh, so that way, when there is some sort of, if there is ever some other combative information that comes out, uh, that this is uh, debunked by 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 their narrative or by these declassified documents. So anyway, guys, what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about these declassified documents that Biden is supposed to release? Uh, wh what kind of mumbo jumbo do you think it'll include? What kind of cheese do you think that he's going to try to deal? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for staying informed. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and as well as support the channel if you can. If it's on your heart, really helps me out. Um, all those links are in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in again. I will catch you in the next video. Muchachos y muchachas, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are a lot more videos like that and more on my new platform, NatalieDenise.tv, where you can also catch some of my old documentaries that you guys loved so much last year. That plus more. I just launched a new membership, Natalie Denise Exclusives, in which we'll host new content, very exclusive content, some of which is based and un popular with the mainstream, so therefore it has to be hosted there. Uh, please consider signing up at nataliedenise.tv. Also, please remember that I have a merch store, nataliedenisegear.com, which is also linked in my description below, in which a portion of every single sale will go towards human trafficking, rescue, and aftercare. Thank you guys so much for your support. See you later.